So let's look at the two regularization techniques of, of, of this course. So the first technique is called the, uh, the weight decay method, which is a, 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 a unconstrained minimization. It's a constrained minimization method. The other one is called the augmented error. This is unconstrained minimization um, method. So let's first talk about the concept of weight decay, or we, let's call it the soft order constraint. So let's consider the following example. You have a hypothesis set, which is a one variable uh, that is defined in the interval of minus one and one. And, and for example, your hypothesis uh, set will contain all these polynomials, two uh, x squared plus three x plus seven uh, polynomials of this type. Now we want to express a polynomial in terms of its basis functions. I don't want to just use uh, x squared, x, and constant as my basis function because these basis functions are not good. So what I want to do is to, I want to consider a set of polynomials called a Lachanda polynomial. And the set of Lachanda polynomial has a function uh, shaped like these. These polynomials, they are orthogonal. Meaning that if you take the inner product between this polynomial and any other polynomial, you take the integration from minus one to one, uh, that will give you zero. So you integrate between L2 times L3 from minus one to one, you will get zero. The only place that you will, you won't get zero is that you take the inner product of L2 and L2 itself. So Lachanda polynomials, they are orthogonal polynomials. There is a more compact representation than the generic uh, uh, polynomial that you have here. If you only use x squared, x, and constants, uh, you, they are still basis functions, but they're not orthogonal, they're not very compact in terms of representing the, the, the hypothesis that I want to study here, which is a first, uh, which is a one variable polynomial. Okay, so any h can be now be represented as the following. So you will have, you will have a, uh, a weight w, uh, q times all the Lachanda polynomials lq, where q defines the order of the Lachanda polynomial. And then you're summing from one all the way to q. So that would be the, uh, that would be your, your hypothesis set. And then this model is indeed linear. Uh, why? Well, this is just because that I have, I have a, a nonlinear transformation that can take in a data point x and then I can turn it into a vector of 1 through LQ. So this is a transformed vector and then the hypothesis sets, it will just be defined as all the polynomials that is taking a form like this, where I assume that L, L0 is 1. And then, and then here you can see that it is a linear function because once I give you the x, I just need to do the transform and then the, uh, the linearity will be the linearity associated with the w. So now you can define the training error through the logistic or through the linear regression as the following. You define the ensemble error or the training error as just the empirical average of your w transpose zn, where zn is the z, uh, is the nth transformed input, and yn would be your label. So there are multiple ways of constraining the weight, and we can put a hard constraint, saying that I only want to use a second order polynomial. In other words, you can say that all the w's, they are drawn from a 10th order polynomial, like what I'm having here. However, uh, for any q that is bigger than or equals to 3, I will set all the w's to be 0. So that is a hard constraint, saying that I only want a second order polynomial, although the hypothesis set uh, will start with a 10th order polynomial. Now, the soft constraint uh, is the other alternative. What it says is that I want to put the magnitude of my weight coefficients. I want to say that the sum of all the magnitude square has to be upper bound by some constant c. So what it does is to constrain the magnitude of the weight. And you say that because I'm constraining this to two norm square, I don't want to have a very, very large coefficient. Any large coefficient should be penalized. And therefore, by putting this upper bound here, the, the maximum amount of the magnitude square should not be bigger than c. So that will implicitly force the, the weight to be small. 
So the difference between a soft constraint and a hard constraint is that hard constraint, you, uh, you're explicitly forcing the number of non-zeros. And then for the soft constraint, you're softly saying that you will have some freedom for the magnitude. So let's look at this problem from the VC perspective. The optimization problem that we are trying to solve is this. You, you want to solve this uh, uh, training error subject to the constraint that W transpose W is less than or equals to C. Now that should be clear because uh, in the previous slide, we know that we want to put a constraint into our learning problem. And if we choose to use the soft constraint, then we are literally putting a constraint into our minimization problem and that will show up in this form. And why is it W transpose W less than C? That's because we're summing all the W's, uh, squares. And that would be the, 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 the W transpose W. And we know that the in sample error is just written as this equation of 1 over n times the z of the w's. Now what is z? z would just be your transformed input vector put into a matrix. And the y's, they are just the, the labels. And so you have z times w and then minus y and you put a two norm square, and that will be your, your, your training error. And then the hypothesis set says that I want to just draw all the, all the uh, w's coming out from the set. And this hypothesis set is actually parameterized by the constant c, which is the upper bound on the magnitude that you have in this equation. So the optimization is equivalent to say that I want to minimize your training error over a different hypothesis set. And this hypothesis set is defined on a C, and you can see that if C1 is less than C2, so you can choose here, you have a, a, a smaller C compared to a larger C, okay, C1 is less than C2, then you can ask, uh, will H1, uh, HC1 will become a subset of H, uh, H of C2 or the other way around? Well, because you are using a different C, because C1 is less than C2, then you have a more constraint on, C, on, on, on the C1 case than the C2 case. And as a result, your hypothesis set H as C1 has to be less than the, the hypothesis set of H uh, as C2. And consequently, this, since this hypothesis set is a smaller hypothesis set than C2, then you can roughly speaking, you can say that the VC dimension of the first set would be less than uh, the second set. Okay. Now, if you go back to here, you can see that if C1 is really less than C2, C1 will be giving a much, much more restrictive set uh, to your hypothesis because once C1 is small, then you do not have too much room to play with all these Ws. You have to choose a very, very small W. Versus if you choose a C2, which is C2 is a big number, then you have a lot of room to play with the Ws. And therefore, you have more freedom in C2 than C1. And so, and so HC1 is a subset of HC2. And then therefore, uh, roughly speaking, your VC dimension will become, uh, uh, will follow this inequality. Now, because you're choosing the uh, smaller sets, uh, H of C, compared to if you do not constrain anything. When you do not constrain anything, your C is infinity. Then, then you have the original hypothesis set. And so you can see that by putting any C here, I am re reducing the VC dimension of my hypothesis set. And therefore, because the VC dimension drops, and so the generalization bound becomes better. So now we can ask, how do we solve the constraint minimization problem? Uh, that is not a, a very, very challenge because we have gone through the equations before. The technique is just to consider the Lagrange technique, and by solving the problem like this, you have the uh, you have the in sample error plus all these um, uh, regularization terms, with the lambda c being a regularization parameter. So you can see in this equation, uh, you have lambda c divided by n, and what is this n? Well, this n uh, says that as you have more and more training samples, then you may want to reduce the influence of, re of your regularization. So as n increases, if you keep the lambda c as a constant, then the second term, this term, uh, will, 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 will go to zero as n goes to infinity. 
Now, there are different choices of the regularization. You can choose the two norm square of the W, W transpose W as what I'm showing here, or you can use the regularization uh, like this, where you put a gamma Q, uh, where gamma Q is a weight. You can encourage more low order fit, or you can encourage high order fit, depending on how you control the gamma Qs. So now we are done with the uh, soft constraint approach. That is a constraint minimization approach. Let's also talk about the second approach of doing the augmented error. The augmented error says that instead of minimizing the in the in sample error subject to a constraint, let's change the the, the learning problem to an in sample error plus this term, which is the regularization term, and let's define it as the augmented error. Now this is just a, a, a retranslation of what we have seen in the constraint case using the Lagrange multiplier setting. And so we understand that this problem is equivalent to the previous problem for appropriate choices of lambda and c. Uh, so this is an augmented error approach, and now this approach has the advantage that it is unconstrained, and therefore it is usually easier to solve than the constraint minimization problem. The price that you're paying here is the interpretability. Previously, you can say that here I have a con I have a constant c, and I want the magnitude of my w to be not bigger than c. But here, you do not have this kind of interpretability. What is the meaning of this gamma uh, lambda? The lambda can just be something. Okay, and by choosing a bigger lambda, bigger, smaller lambda, you do not necessarily refer to the magnitude of the, of the W, unless you do the translation from the lambda to the C that we have done before. So for any given C, the soft constraint corresponds to choosing a hypothesis that has a smaller set, uh, the hypothesis set HC, and VC analysis that says that we will be able to get a better uh, generalization when C decreases. Now the optimum C is the sum of the sum magnitude as we, uh, which we allow. For augmented error, you, you need to find the optimum parameter lambda star. Now how do we find that? We need to talk about it. Uh, and this result is also not very interpretable. That's the, uh, that's the slight drawback. However, people will still prefer to use the augmented error approach because it's unconstrained. It's a lot easier to implement. So let us look at the, uh, the augmented error also from the VC perspective. So the augmented error for a hypothesis uh, H in the set of hypothesis sets is given by this. You have the augmented error of H lambda and omega. That is defined as the ensemble error plus this omega H, same as before. And then you have lambda divided by N. So that is a good regularization parameter lambda and you also have a number of training samples. The augmented error is defined in this, in this way. And you can see that if I have a lot of samples as n goes to infinity, this term will go to zero, and then I will just rely on my in-sample error because when I have enough samples, my in-sample error will be a good one. However, if I do not have enough training samples when my n is small, I do want to do some constraint to my, uh, to my error using the omega of h. So here, omega of h in our example would be the w transpose w, and there are two components in this penalty. Uh, the the first one would be the omega h, which is our uh, w transpose w. This is the function that we're choosing to uh, to impose the penalty. The other one would be the regularization parameter lambda, which controls the amount of regularization. So there is an interplay between lambda and omega. You cannot just choose omega, you also need to choose the lambda. As n increases, the need for regularization goes down because it is given by this equation. As n goes to infinity, this term will go away. This equation resembles VC bound in the sense that this is capturing the, the, uh, the uh, the, the accuracy term, and also uh, when you when you uh, when you have a more complex model uh, in omega h, then omega h will become big, and you you will see that the error will be will not be as good, and so you do want to choose a, as simple hypothesis as possible, and you also want to make sure that you have as many samples as possible in order to in order for this entire term to be small. So 
if in, in both minimization problems, we see that there is a parameter like lambda that you need to control. And this diagram shows you the different choices of the uh, lambda. If your lambda is very small, then you are not just, you're not, you're not solving the overfitting problem. So you still have this uh, overfitting issue going on. Now, as you gradually increase your lambda, you will go all the way to the other end. And that is underfitting when your lambda is too big. Now, why would this happen? When your lambda is just too big, then you're putting too much emphasis on your regularization. And then you, cho you, you will choose to use a very, very small W. And that is just not good for your problem. That would be the underfitting problem. So what would be the optimum one? The optimum in this example is here, but you need to figure out this lambda star through a technique called the validation, which we will introduce in next lecture.